Hill and G-Man Choi were traded to the Padres for three prospects. Rodolfo Castro was traded to the Phillies for a prospect. I'm probably forgetting some. Oh, Austin Hedges was traded to somebody for international cap space. Good morning to you. Good Wednesday morning, I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports, and this is Daily Shot of Pirates. It comes your way bright and early every weekday. If you're into football and or hockey, I also offer daily shots of Steelers and Penguins in the same place that you found this. Pirates 4, Tigers 1 last night at PNC Park. Another significantly encouraging outing, I thought, for Johan Oviedo, a run in six hits over seven innings. Scoreless relief from Angel Perdomo and David Bednar. A home run for Leover Piguero. A couple of hits for Alika Williams. And that you know, should be the story of the day. And it's not because it was Major League Baseball's trade deadline. And trades supersede the event in every sport anymore. And I don't mean the event like that day. I mean the game. Trades are of such intense interest to a certain subsection of fans that I swear, I don't even know if they watch the games, you know, because it's all just about could get this guy, could get that guy. Oh, no. What if we lose this guy? It's a really, 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 really big deal. And I get that in every sport, really, other than football, where trades are not all that common. In the Pirates case, yeah, there were. These three total transactions, and I'm now remembering that Hedges went to the Rangers for that international cap space. If you want to discuss the prospects who've come back in these other two deals, you're going to have to press play on another podcast. I'm out on that stuff. I'm out. These guys... I, I, I've been saying it for a while now. These guys have lost the right to continue kicking the can down the road. And I feel comfortable in stating that while at the same time not necessarily lamenting the transactions themselves. In other words, maybe Hill and Choi for these three dudes they got from San Diego is actually going to be a pretty nice deal for the Pirates in 2026, 2027, whatever it is. Also possible, maybe Hill and Choi and before them could actually have been of some use to this operation in 2024, especially and obviously the two first basemen. The Pirates don't have a first baseman. They don't have one at any level of the system. They can't even pretend to have one. When all you have in Pittsburgh is Connor Joe, You don't have a first baseman. You can fantasize about Jared Triolo going to that side, but then what are you doing? He's got one home run. Like all year in the minors. That's what you're going to get from one of your infield corners when the other one, Brian Hayes, is getting you very little power too? I don't think so. So what this means, what all of this means, when you put it all together, or try to, is that this winter we'll see yet another reset button. I have no doubt that Ben Charrington's going to go to free agency and add very similar players. I don't believe it'll be of a higher or more expensive pedigree, but very similar to the ones that he just got. Well, Maybe those guys were the ones that he wanted. Maybe those guys were the ones that fit the best. This was some of what Charrington had to say on that specific subject to reporters at PNC Park after the deadline. We certainly considered that. We certainly you know, considered a, like a more passive approach and just keeping everybody. Um, we felt like, and, and we weighed that versus um, you know the opportunity to get some young talent or access to young talent that we didn't have a week ago. Um, combined with you know opening up opportunity for some guys that have a chance to be here for a longer period of time. But I had a chance to talk to all of um, Carlos, Rich, um, Austin, and, and G. Montroy, also all four of them. Um, you know we acquired them all this past off season. Uh, 
with the intent to uh, get better. You know, we felt like they could help us get better in 2023, and uh, we hoped that that would mean that we were having a different conversation today. We were having a different conversation in July that we were, you know, fighting for, we were in a better position in the division and, and the wild card and fighting for something, and that would have been a different uh, trade deadline. Um, but I, I shared with all of them in, in my appreciation for them because I do believe we, we brought to the Pirates to help us get better. I, do, I believe we got better uh, in, in part because of their contributions, both on the field and off the field. And so they did exactly what we hoped that all, all four of them did, did exactly what we hoped that they would do. And we'll be rooting for them. They'll have a chance to play in a playoff chase now. He'd go on to say that in speaking with all of Santana, Hill, and Choi in recent days, that he expressed to them that his top priority was winning right now and that within winning right now, keeping them would be the best thing. He, he said this. He said this out loud in front of cameras and microphones. And then they were gone for teams number 38 or 52 prospects. This is the realm in which Charrington is comfortable. There's a saying about war throughout history, and I'm not talking about wins above replacement players, I'm talking about actual bleeping war, that those who lead the revolution are not always fit to lead the government afterward. And by the way, history will bear that out. There are legends, icons who were phenomenal at inspiring and guiding uprisings and who then went into power and had no clue how to actually manage things. i starting to kind of think of Charrington that way. His plan from the very beginning was a very, very good one, still is conceptually. But if he doesn't have a page two to this plan, you know, maybe somebody else does. Because that scene, all of those scenes yesterday, all of them, they're just no different. There's nothing about anything that's happening in 2023, with very, very, very few exceptions, that's different. Other than there's a few more younger, promising players in Pittsburgh. That's it. That's the sole difference. The approach isn't changing. When we come back, J1Q... This portion of Daily Shot of Pirates is brought to you by our friends at North Shore Tavern that's directly across Federal Street from PNC Park. It's home of Steak on a Stone, an eating experience, underscoring the word experience. The steak is brought to you partially cooked on an 800 degree stone and you do the rest. It's a ton of fun, it's a great meal, and it's a baseball atmosphere like no other in Pittsburgh. North Shore Tavern, right across Federal Street from PNC Park. Your front door, your car, your bike, your computer, your gun. Safety is a habit. Every day you lock and secure your home and everything you want to keep safe. Gun safety and responsible storage are no different and the best way to help prevent accidents, misuse, and theft. If you have a firearm, own it, respect it, and secure it. Visit projectchildsafe.org. Brought to you by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the Bureau of Justice Assistance. Taylor has today's J1Q, and he says, DK, the kids are here. The future is now. Big hole at first base and need a couple of starting pitchers. Does management spend all of the dollars they've been saving until the time was right to fill in the needy spots on the roster? Yeah, they'll fill them, Paul. There's ample precedent for that. Anybody who suggests otherwise is being cynical just to be cynical. All you have to do is go back to a handful of months ago. Needed one first baseman, got two. Needed a couple other pieces, a stopgap catcher, got that in Austin Hedges. Wasn't particularly popular, but they got it. Needed some starting pitching stability, added Rich Hill. 
all those guys were part of this. Kutch was part of this. Can't leave him out. That's not sentimentality, you know? Kutch came, and although he had a really, really rough July, for the most part, he's produced for this team. So they'll do it again, but I suggested in the opening segment that I I don't see it being at some other level. For one thing, Major League Baseball's free agency market tends to have two tiers, not three. There's a super expensive one, and then there's a lower, lower, lower level one, where it's a bunch of guys signing one year at the most two-year deals. That's where the Pirates shop. I don't think they even know where that other aisle is in the store. So if if you're asking, Paul, if they're going to go into some other stratosphere as far as individual price tags, there is no precedent for that. And I mean none. Even the more expensive free agents that they've signed over the last 20 years have been guys who are kind of coming back to them. You know, Ivan Nova, for example, was signed out of free agency, even though he's just been with the Pirates. Uh, Francisco Liriano was someone in a in a similar situation. But you're not talking about, you know, looking at who the upper crust guys are and saying, hey, let's get a star to fill this spot. Let's get a really, really high impact first baseman. No, no. If anything, they'd be emboldened by the fact, and it is a fact, that Santana was such a quality value signing to Charrington's credit. And a lot of teams signed other players for that same position in the same role who didn't do anywhere near as well as Santana despite costing a lot more that they'd they'd probably think they're nuts to be looking in that other aisle. So, no, you're not going to see that. And this part is also to their credit. If you have more of these younger players who are competing for spots, then you don't need as many of these money type guys. Well, go get a starting pitcher or two is the comeback that is most common in this conversation. If you can't think of where else to spend it on the field, you can always spend it on the rotation. Well, okay, but start counting the rotation guys that you got. And even in a year where Vince Velasquez, Max Cranick, JT Brubaker, Mike Burrows in AAA all went down to the Tommy John surgery, all of them, all four, all four of them being righties, even in that year, adding on top of it, that Ruanzi Contreras went backward, that Luis Ortiz, to a lesser extent, but nonetheless, went backward. You've got six righties. And even just factoring in the ones who you do or don't hold the rights to, you've got a lot of them still coming back. Do you still need to add starting pitching? Yeah, of course. Are you going to get, you know, the next or the current Justin Verlander? No, no. You're not going to do that. They're not going to do that. Charrington's not even going to have it cross his mind. But yes, the the best and fairest, I think, way to answer your question is yes, they will spend more. I believe their payroll will go up again. But I don't believe that you're going to see some transformational change in roster structure or a this is it. This is when we're going to bring out the $20 million a year salary offer. It's not going to happen. Not going to happen. I appreciate the question. I appreciate everyone listening to Daily Shot of Pirates. I am flying tonight to Milwaukee to cover all four games with the Brewers. That begins tomorrow up in Wisconsin. Today, the Pirates are completing their series with the Tigers at PNC Park. That's at 12.35 p.m. first pitch.